Hey everybody, my name is Joseph. I'm going to try a live streaming development of a game that I'm working on called Terminus in the hopes that it will keep me on topic and it'll keep me from getting too distracted with all the nuanced pieces. I'm also going to try to explain what it is I'm working on and why I'm doing certain things in the hope that it'll help me understand it better, in the hopes that it'll help me practice explaining and uh, thinking through things a little bit more, and in the hopes that maybe you can see a little bit about the thought process. For experienced developers, especially experienced game developers, this will probably be really, really irksome because I will get lost frequently, I'll miss out obvious things, you'll probably throw stuff at your monitors and televisions uh, if you're watching this. And for those of you that are new, I might instill some bad habits. But without any further intro, let me talk about what it is that I'm working on and what I want to do in this stream. So, once again, the game that I'm working on is called Terminus. It's a near-future science fiction game about reprogramming robots and interacting with uh, an AI to kind of figure out what's going on. The language that I'm working in is Kotlin, with some Java as well and I'm using libgdx. Everything that I have uh, so far is pretty standard fair boilerplate. Uh, this is the main application. If I mash run, then you'll... Uh, it's gonna chug for a second and you'll see we have just basically a starting test scene. Uh, I just wanted to... I hand-painted an object in Blender to kind of A, see if I could do it, and B, to try out the object loading. I think what I'm going to work on today is uh, player movement. So I'm not really going to... I'm going to take out that default model first, and then I'm going to add an actor placeholder for the player and try and move that person around on the 2D plane. So uh, the first thing that I want to do... Um, this is already the main game, so I don't have to worry about any menus or stuff like that. I have that kind of in the background. Um, I had some hopes early on about introducing some multiplayer elements, so I do have a network thread right there. But the first thing that I want to do is get a player on screen. Okay, so we I have this entity class, which subclass is actor. And I guess the first thing I should do is define act. So, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just define... Um, I'll define a player which will inherit from both actor and network entity. So class, play, actor, actor. And the reason that I'm making this, excuse me, player a separate thing from uh, the entity is because I'm probably going to get rid of entity and I want to be able to override apply message and get message separately. So what I'm thinking is Normally, when you build the update loop, you, you call act on the actor, and then they'll apply their input and all that good jazz. Uh, in this case, though, I want also to record the difference between the last time that get message was called and apply message was called. So if it's... Uh, if you call get message on an actor, they're going to serialize their state and throw it over the network. And if somebody else is playing, they will receive a state update and apply it to the players that are interacting with them. Uh, but every player has different things that they care about, and in my mind, I would rather not want to figure out a generalized way of handling, like, a, doing reflection and saying, okay, these are the names that we care about serializing, this is how often they should be serialized, this is how we replay them. That's just a mess. So in my mind, it makes more sense to override get and apply message for each of the individual people. And if it turns out that later on it, there's a lot of overlapping code, I'll refactor it and I'll pull everything into entity and then we'll do it like that. So uh, the first thing that I want to do for this actor, um, I'm going to implement these abstract classes, I think, and hopefully IntelliJ gives me the pop-up for, yep, right there. Uh, do I want to implement as constructor? I'm just going to Implement the members, select everything, bam. Alright, uh, the ID should be uniquely generated. I'm not going to mess around with that for now because I don't care. Get message and apply message I should do. So uh, let me just return a new network message. 
in this case, um, the last tick is going to be this tick. The property name is going to be player player update. This is not going to be a delta, and the exact value here I'm thinking will just be empty string. Uh, the entity ID is this ID, so I should implement ID. Ah, I don't want to do that. Um, this is a this right here is just a way of um, making ID read only. I'm thinking I might initialize it differently. Yeah, I'm just gonna say uh, this is one. Yeah, and then apply message. Well, we're not gonna do anything here, so do nothing. Perfect. We're off to a good start. Now the actual process, like now we can get into the really uh, interesting pieces. I don't think that actor in and of itself has any graphical pieces. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to give the player a model instance, and I don't know if I have to have an animation player as well, but I, I'm getting ahead of myself. First things first, let's just have a model instance. I'm going to make it a variable model instance, model instance. Um, should this be late in it? I'm thinking about this. So, uh, what am I thinking about? I want to be able to specify the model for the player, and I want it to be reusable, sort of, kind of. I just want to handle the distribution of the assets well. So if I decide to like hard code it, I'd still have to load those values. Or I'd still have to load um, the actual model name. So what I might do is in an init method, I'll come back to this, init is call into the main game and get the asset manager. Ooh, which is not shared. So either we can pass the asset manager to our entities when we spawn them, or we can make our main game's asset manager more public. Um, I'm not sure which one I like more. I mean, obviously it's really convenient if I can just like grab a global asset manager, but that might prove that. The threat is, unfortunately, that we will try to load things in a different thread or load stuff asynchronously, and it'll get all screwed that way, or we end up with race conditions. But I kind of don't care. So I think what I'll do is create a companion object. Oh, I've already got one. And I'll throw my asset manager in there. Asset manager, assets, yeah, just like that. Um, and I'm going to make it kind of constant. Perfect. Uh, there is some risk that this object will be instantiated too soon. So I'm going to say late in it. And I'm not going to initialize it here, but I am going to call it asset manager. Late in it, for those of you that are not well versed in uh, Kotlin, just means that Kotlin doesn't uh, has a different way of representing nullable types. So if I said asset manager is question mark, that means asset manager could be null or not null. But generally, we don't want things to be null if we can avoid it, because then we avoid a whole host of errors. And we just say, all right, asset manager is basically never going to be null. But I can't initialize asset manager here because my OpenGL context isn't spun up. So instead, what I'm going to do is in the create loop, I'm just going to go down and find my asset manager and say uh, my main game.assets is equal to the asset manager. So late in it says 
yeah, I'm not declaring here, but I pinky promise that I will initialize this thing before it gets used. Don't bother null checking it. At least that's my understanding. All right, so we've got our asset manager. Great. If I run back to our entity now, then I should be able to say model instance equals model instance and pass it main game assets dot get, and then uh, let me say uh, what should this be called? Player dot model player. I'm wondering if I should. Uh... Okay, taking a step back. This will be the way I do it in the future, but for now, I'm just going to make the player a queue. Easy peasy, right? So, um, main game. I wonder if I can do a set instead of. Because I've normally used asset, asset manager. Normally, I have used Asset Manager to load stuff. I'm sure I've got an example somewhere around here. Um, but instead, I'm thinking of just using something like this, where I can just attach a cube. So let's try Asset Manager, Assets dot put set. And no, it doesn't look like I can insert an asset. Do I just want to make a cube? Kinda, sorta. Do I want to load something? Kinda, sorta. Um, actually, let me get rid of this networking stuff. I'll, or just collapse it. I should get rid of it. I'm using version control, so I don't need it. But I'm, I was still working on that in an earlier project, so I'll, for now, for now, I'm just gonna get rid of stuff. Okay, um, let's make a player really quickly, not to get too distracted, like I'm about to. Um, this is our cube object. For those of you unfamiliar with Blender, Blender is pretty cool. It doesn't have the easiest UI, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, let us bevel. Uh, this will work. And I think I flipped. There we go. If you roll your mouse, then you get varying levels of bevel. Fun to say. And just for aesthetics, I'm also going to, I think, extrude these individual faces inward. Um, e, S, E, left click, S to scale inward. And then I think this will be up. Yeah, I'm gonna. I would kind of like to make this an up arrow, just so I know. Yeah. E. S, e alt M, and then merge it center. So, up arrow. Delightful. Um, I kind of want some asymmetry, just so I can tell which direction it's forward. And towards that end, I will actually no. Let me make two edge loops, and I'll try and get this a little bit of a forward-looking op going on. This little screwed scale in, scale out a tad. G Y uh, G X. Sorry. So this will be the X axis. And that's our arrow for X. And in theory, that's all we need. Yeah, if we have these two axes, then whatever is uh, left over is going to be. Um, I don't know how to end that sentence. All right, but so we're done with this model. Uh, and I'm going to file, export. There's a plugin available uh, for exporting libgdx stuff. And I'll put it in D source space station. Uh, this was based on 
a clone of Space Station 13. If you haven't played Space Station 13, it's such a fun game. There are wonderful tales that come out of there. I'm going to call this player. Player 23D. All right. There were just a bunch of errors that I missed, but that's all right. So let's load our player. Um, this is everything initialized. I have another place that I'm doing a little bit of loading. Oh, here, we've got debug model building, so... Uh, let me call this section... 3D model building. Building, asset loading. I think I have an asset loader inside... yeah, yeah. So, assets.load player.g3db and this is model class Java. That's going to run for a while. Um, when the loading is complete, uh, all the assets are done loading, we spawn a test object. I'm going to do the same for the player. Spell player equals player. I'm, I'm tempted to... So I said I was going to have the player call into the main game to load its model. Now I'm kind of thinking, if I'm going to be loading the level, should I have the level... Uh, should I have the main game assign the value to the player? That might be the better way to go, I think. Um, I still want a singleton for the assets, because there are other places that I might need to be able to play... Um, like sound or stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just make a player like that, and then inside the players constructor, which I can jump to with Control B, I'm not gonna worry about anything here. But I will have our model instance. Uh, one other thing about Kotlin is. Um, you can specify constructors in a lot of different ways, but I'm going to say var model model instance. And now, when somebody constructs this, they have to pass model instance as a parameter. What do you do? I think that actors also have position. Let me check that really quickly. Um, override fun pickup act. Yep. Call super, and then this dot position. Yes, I do have position. Excellent. Okay. Um, maybe position set position. Okay, so it looks like this is um, not quite what I had hoped for. Uh, hoped far as for. Hoped for as far as uh, the position stuff was concerned. I think. I might need to implement or override uh, something for draw. Um, I, I'm more used to 2D games and using Canvas 2D with actors is awesome. I might not need to use actor here, but uh, because Articulate. Normally, if you're using Actor and the Scene 2D um, API, you have a stage, and to that stage you add a bunch of actors. And when you call Update and Draw, the stage will call into all the actors and call Update for them, or Act, actually, and then it'll call Draw for all of them. The difference here is we're drawing 3D, and I I'm assuming that because it is stage 2D and not stage 3D, it'll only pass in a sprite batch, which means that for all of our actors, we need to uh, individually update them and draw them. And that's not a big deal, but it's just something that we have to keep in mind. So I might... Yeah, I think I'm going to start by writing... I'm going to do the bare minimum that's necessary. So, act. I'm also going to type fun draw or override fun draw. 
and this is patching a passing a batch, which is actually a really good thing because batch is more generic. So uh, batch .rod. I can give it texture. I can give it no. Unfortunately, it looks like I can't quite draw the player um, with the sprite batch. So I have to. I'll have to make some class like Actor 3D or something like that later on, and then implement uh, the methods for that. But that's neither here nor there. So um, back to main game. We've constructed our player. Loading is finished. Um, I think, yeah, player 3D. We will do. Let's add our. Oh, uh, yes. To this, we have to do assets.get player.g3db3db. This is model last.java. Notice there are no semi. Oh, what did I mess up? What did I mess up? Ah, model instance. Okay. Um, I think that my draw function is drawing all the model instances. All the model instances. All the model instances. I'm not going to do that, just I am. But I am going to val player model instance equals model instance, and I will instance this asset. And then pass player model instance. Alright, I think I also have my entities. You know what? Uh, since we're here, I'm going to implement Actor 3D. Why not? Uh, so I had called this entity, but I'm actually going to call this Actor 3D. And Actor 3D is going to behave a whole lot like Actor 2D, but instead of draw, I'm going to say class, Actor3D, we will have um, fun draw, and this will instead take a model batch, model batch, model batch, and an environment. And I'm thinking that all of my Actor 3Ds will have a position and a volume, or at least a position and a bounding box. I'm thinking forward now to physics. Uh, do I want to do physics? I kind of want to do simple physics, so I'm not going to worry too much about all that fun ray stuff. Uh, I have imagined that terminus would behave kind of like um, Sort of a board game, so just a grid of stuff with people in discrete cells. That way, I can simulate you know things moving through the environment a little bit more easily than if I had like a real totally 3D thing going on. So people occupy discrete spaces. And that means that I can get away with doing things a lot uh, more simple than I would otherwise be able to get away with. So let's uh, let's write draw. I'm assuming that the draw call has started here. Probably. Yeah, so the model batch calls render on all the instances. Yeah. So the, the actor might have several sub-objects they want to call, and as long as model batch calls begin and end. We're going to be okay. Um, like it's not going to generate a ton of draw calls. So we'll just do model batch dot render. Uh, oh, and actually, I need to. This is abstract. Abstract because we have to have our player object implement that. And this will implement Act three D instead. Still the same kind of thing act and then override fun 
raw model batch. And uh, we will say model batch dot render this dot model in environment. Perfect. Oh, I know, that's a lot. So let's come back here. Um, I'm I see an error. Entity oh, um, my actors are now See the actors I originally had intended to um, this originally was actor and it implemented the network actor and all that. So let me just say instead actor. I'm gonna do actor 3D. I kind of don't want to do that. Well. Just get it done. Just get it done. Just get it done. Uh, I'm I'm not going to worry about it. I'll deal with that thought later. And um, I also have inside of our network code the oh uh, originally I had entity because those entities also implemented the network actors pieces, and then the host would simulate all the actors, and the clients would just get updates and kind of assume the host is the one that's doing it right. But for now, uh, I'm going to stick to the stupid simple version, and I will say actors uh, add player. I should probably keep a reference to the player also, because reasons. Um, but now, model, sorry, uh, actors for each isn't Kotlin wonderful. For each actor actually I don't even this dot raw um, for each and then our model batch and a copy of our environment. Okay. Now ideally we will see the player when we push this button. Fingers crossed. Nope. Uh, late in a property has not been initialized. I lied. I lied. Um, that should have been initialized before load level was called. Main game assets. I could just say. All right, I'm going to try to get rid of this late in it and make the asset manager here. The reason that this is a little bit risky is if you don't have an initialized OpenGL context before this happens, then all kinds of weird stuff happens. Well, most notably just odd crashes that you can't seem to explain. Late in a property has not been initialized. This is why we can't have nice things. Assets. I think I may have just uh, another, yep, another old reference. Because I'm stupid. So get rid of that. Let's do this. Far. And now, for reals this time, main game assets dot assets. This asset matter. This will work, and I don't. Uh, I had not properly scoped uh, the arguments inside of my load function, so this should be main game dot assets and main game dot load, and then these I'm not going to touch because I want to make sure that the scoping is right. Now, do we see our player? Yep. File not found. Player dot. Did I copy it to the right directory? Maybe not. So export to D source SS13 old folder name again core assets. I thought I exported it here, but player G3DB. Ah, callback problem. 
do the things. Uh, can't have a model without materials. Oh, no, oh, that, that explains why I didn't export. Uh, so let's get to materializing. I'm not going to use cycles. I'm going to use Blender in this case. Um, let's give it a new shiny material called Layer Mat. Layer Mat material. My vision is going and it's really scaring me. Right, and this is going to be our player mesh, our player object. This is our player mesh. I just rename. You don't have to rename these. Uh, I'm just doing that because of, in the event that I start chasing stuff down, I want to be able to, you know, work through it in the editor. All right. Um, I'm going to split off this window and open up our texture painter. Or a UV image editor. Um, I'm going to UV unwrap this in the simple ways that, in the most simple of ways. I have diffuse here, which might be a default. Unwrap. That doesn't look like it worked. U. Smart UV project. Ah, there we go. And then I'm going to assign a new material. I don't know how high resolution this should be. The player is probably going to be like a 10% of the screen, a 10, 10% of the screen, which means if you're running at uh, 2440 by whatever, then they should be about 10% of that, so like 256-ish. So let me generate an image. Uh, why, why can't I do the thing? View the image editor, image, yeah. okay, because I'm insane. Um, and this is going to be a really small texture, 256 to 56. This I'm going to call diffuse. It'll, uh, I will leave an alpha channel. There we go. And now I'm going to switch into texture paint. Missing data. No, it's not. Diffuse color. 56, 56. This is going to make its own diffuse color. Diffuse. I must have forgotten to assign it to the vertices or something. Diffuse. Um, player material. I want to make sure I don't have two. I do not. And then this. Diffuse color. Okay. Fine. Let's see what I care. Diffuse. Maybe I spelled it wrong elsewhere. Ah. Yeah. See, I do have two copies of diffuse. Of diffuse. Um, I'm going to delete this one because it has no references. And I will select this one. And then we'll use our UV map to uh, project stuff. All right, texture paint. Uh, let's, let's start with something science fiction-y, like white. You can also texture paint here, but that's not. Um, let me instead texture. I think I have. Um, I need to go back into object mode really quickly and just make some more lights. I only have the one. Those are, those are my friends. Alright, and back to painting. Important part, if you're streaming, you should probably turn off chat. I'm sure basically everybody that's watching this, if you are the type to watch you know, videos, you've seen a half dozen and a half presentations of people that are talking about freaking uh, anything, and then suddenly their Skype pops up like, hey dude, that tusk gets hammered. Like, people who, people who use the word dude. I don't know what I'm talking about. Alright, um, um, and here is our red axis. Maybe I'm going to make this green just because I don't want it to look like a knob. I'm sure I'm the only one that thought that. Red rocket, red rocket! rocket. Alright, I'm doing a great job painting this. <sighs> Looks like a clown from a trash compactor. But, that's good enough. So, now we will... Uh, I, I'm going to save... Uh, I'll pack this as PNG. And I'm also going to export... G3DB to D, my source directory, SS13, build, or uh, core, assets, player. player. 
No errors. Excellent. Now when I push this button, yeah, close enough. Um, file not found. Can't load file this one. Can't load file that one. Can't load dependencies, which means I can't pack this PNG. I need to save the image. Save as image. Diffuse.png. Uh, not at least on pod, but rather source um, SS13. So many abandoned projects. Core assets. Uh, diffuses a different project, I think. Uh, I don't know for what assets it would be looking at. Well, scroll here. That's the source of the problems and assets that update. Can't load that. Can't load file. Can't load file, file, not file. So I suspect it's to do with this. Player, player. Let's take a look at what's in that folder. So I have player g3db, test g3db, and diffuse.png, which is probably a diffuse for a different um, material, which is probably why the generated name was slightly different than the one that I gave it, because I'm stupid. How do I want to solve this? Well, let's at least export it to a folder and see what we can get. So, export to a folder. I'm going to make a new folder here. That'll solve the issue. Player. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes the naming a little more complicated, but at the very least, we'll, uh, uh, it makes it easier for us. There you go, assets. Yeah, this is the other disease, and now I have player. And I can save this image. Image, image save as image. Um, D, oops, D source, space station 15. I wish this were on the player. Yes, OK, diffuse, saved. And now we also have the source directory set there, which is good. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to export again, just to make sure that the path is set correctly. And I'm also going to export as an OBJ. And I do, I like the OBJ format, but um, it's not. It shows its age. And mostly I like it just because it's easy to uh, write readers and writers for it. Okay. Now we see player, and I should be able to do player forward slash player. And also here. Let's see what happens. File, not found. Player diffuse.png. Is this why we can't have our strings? File, not found. Oh, uh, the. Uh, this is a binary format, but I'm still going to open it with Notepad. Yes. Um, diffuse. Yeah. And it's looking for the full path. File name. I should be opening this in the hex editor, but <laughs> fuck it. Here it goes. Diffuse. Okay, let's see if it, let's see if that works. Otherwise, you know, I've, I've prepped the file, but who cares? Part of me was really hoping that would work. 
error parsing files. Yeah, I, I screwed it up. I screwed it up. I'm sorry. Sorry. Ah, so, so, in light of that, um, and in the hopes of leaving this with something working, I'm going to say echo. OBJ. Um, I don't know if there's a separate. I might have to change model dot class, but for now, for now, I'm just going to do uh, the OBJ load. Yay! There's that, and inside of that is our inside of that box is our player model, which is uh, horrifyingly ugly. But yeah, uh, looks like I've got at least that much done. Success. I kind of want to make a move, uh, but this has already been running on for a while. So I'm going to stop screaming. Thanks, everybody. I'll do another video when I get the motivation to do it. See you next time. Oh, I haven't stopped recording. Oops. Oops.